Hello, my name's Clive Whittam and I'm here in the forest in Barcelona because I'm looking for a gua sha tool. And what I want to do is look for a tool uh, which is around me in the natural world and I'm going to show you some uh, a, a simple technique that you can use with a tool to help prevent and protect your health. So they actually used all kinds of tools throughout the history of Gua Sha and some of these were documented and they used all kinds of things that you might see in nature. Now it's very common to come across uh, tools which are made of buffalo horn um, or some kind of stone, beyond stone or quartz, um, a porcelain um, a plate, a bowl, uh, a spoon and there's also ABS plastic. Um, but in old days they didn't have these so they used to use copper coins uh, they would use willow branches and they would use hemp and the lubrication that they would use would be water or sesame oil so what I'm going to do now uh, I'm going to go and have a look and find a suitable tool uh, amongst the uh, mountains around me in Barcelona and uh, I'm then going to uh, once I've found the tool, I'm going to then show you a technique that you can use with the tool. So first of all, let's have a look for the tool. So I've finished my search around this whole area here, but what I've got is a bunch of tools that you can use to do gua sha. Now, what does a gua sha tool look like? Well, hang on, I've got some here. So here's a, a water buffalo tool. So you can see the size of that and uh, how thin it is. So um, this is probably the most common tool you're going to find uh, anywhere uh, because it's the one most based on the folk tradition of Gua Sha in uh, China. Um, here's a, a jade tool uh, and as you can see this is an S shape. So this one um, is again very very popular and uh, jade throughout the history of uh, Chinese philosophy has always been prized and so uh, normally these are fairly expensive to get jade um, but as I always say about any jade tool if I were to drop it I'm okay to drop it here because this is in the forest but if I drop it in my clinic it smashes and so uh, it's it's not as durable as I'd like when I buy something so I'm gonna put that one down there and here's another one Here's a, a, a triangular shaped tool, which is very common for the neck, for the face. Uh, this one is uh, ABS plastic, which is, uh, or resin, which is uh, extremely strong. I can drop it anywhere. Um, um, but these are the kind of sizes of the tool. So I was having a look around um, for various tools. So remember in antiquity, all I would need is um, a, a strong branch and I can use that to do gua sha. Uh, remember, willow branches and cherry branches were very common to be used um, to scrape, certainly in the Ming Dynasty. So, what have I got here? Let's have a look. I've picked up a whole bunch of tools. Um, the thing I need to look for is, is it sharp or is it smooth. So what I'm looking for is the smoothness of the tool. So um, some of these are slightly too jagged to, to use on, uh, on myself. So um, I narrowed it down to this tool here. So uh, this is some kind of stone or quartz and um, this is absolutely fine to do washer. So um, one of the things I always tell people is that when you're doing gua sha, it isn't the tool which is the key, it's what you do with the tool. So here we have my random tool that I picked up in the forest. So let me now show you how you might use this tool to prevent catching any illness and improve your immunity. So how do you do it? So you get your tool. You've got to make sure your tool is uh, has a smooth edge to it um, and that smooth edge is the one you're going to use. Now you're going down on the inside of the arm uh, and so you're just scraping down. Now 
Now you want to divide the inside of your arm into three parts. Uh, the outer part, the middle part and the inner part and scrape down those areas towards your hand. Now what are the distances of the strokes? Now if I hold my hand like this the distance between your middle finger and your uh, wrist and the distance between um, where your little finger is to your thumb so those about halfway between those two distances that's about the distance of each stroke and so you put enough pressure to feel it through the clothes and then keep going on that line uh, I'm not but not on the outside on the inside keep going down that line um, towards or towards where your clothes finish and then do it on a line towards the outer part and then do it on a line towards the inner part. Now when you hit a place with no clothes um, you generally got to have some kind of lubrication. Do you remember in antiquity they used sesame oil and water um, but you can you can use things in your kitchen you can use any kind of uh, oil. Olive oil is perfect although there's a whole bunch of different oils you can use. Um, you can use Vaseline and you can use vapor rub um, and essential oils with um, other oils like a massage oil, anything like that. It's just got to be um, a barrier between uh, the friction of a tool and your skin. Now as you're doing this, um, this is where we break those rules and you can actually use it without any uh, lubrication. This is because you're using the tool. Uh, so you're in control of the pressure and you know exactly how it feels and you know or when it's going to hurt and when it's not going to hurt. Uh, and so if I'm going to use it on myself I often don't bother with lubrication because I know uh, if I'm going to do any damage. Um, <coughs> as long as you, you, as long as you uh, do it carefully um, and use the smooth side and right now this is feeling actually really nice I'm not using any lubrication however remember if you're going to use uh, use this these techniques on someone else you've got to use lubrication you can do up to the uh, the the tips of the fingers each individual finger now once you've done on this on this side then you can come to the outside of the arm. So remember, these are going up towards your shoulder. And again, you can start at each individual uh, finger and just scrape down the finger, each, each of them to the uh, little finger. And then again, you can divide it into three areas. One of the areas is on the uh, towards the thumb side, the other one's towards the little finger side and the one in the middle. Um, and be careful on the skin, but as soon as you hit um, clothing, you can then scrape and then put some pressure on to really uh, dig into the tissue. Now it's possible that through the, uh, the clothes uh, you might uh, cause red marks to come up onto the skin which is called sha in, uh, in, in Gua Sha and uh, that will be okay but it's, uh, it's something that could happen so be aware of that. It means something when you have sha onto the skin and basically it's so something that was there in the tissue um, and then uh, has, has been released. I'm up in the middle and then come up come up the, uh, the back. You can of course continue into this whole area here. It depends on your clothes basically. I mean if you've got some uh, something like this which is covering the whole area of your shoulders you can just carry on. But quite often, I'm going to show you in another video, uh, but quite often with the shoulders we kind of go down um, because it, it's, it's often uh, part of uh, coming down the back of the head and the neck and down the back. And uh, the movement there is, is, is normally uh, going down. So uh, you're going to repeat exactly the same on the other arm here. And then uh, let's have a look at the legs. Okay, and the next part is doing exactly the same thing with your legs. Now if you remember I talked about the inside and the outside for your arms and so it's exactly the same for the legs but it's, a it's the other way around. So the outside is going to go down towards your feet. The inside 
is going to go up from the feet towards the groin. So let's, let's come down on the outside of uh, this leg. So again, you're going to treat both legs. So come down. So remember, uh, in, the, in the middle, on one side and on the other side, but keeping at uh, the front of the, uh, of the thigh here. Bit of dust. Watch out for the bone, which is uh, the tibia, which is down here. Um, and basically you're doing on the outside of the tibia. So if you feel that bone in your um, lower leg, come to the outside of the bone and then come down. Make sure you get the side as well. And then do exactly the same thing, but come down the side. And also the back of your leg. Come right the way down the middle of the back of your leg, all the way down to your uh, knee, back of your knee, and then right the way down the calf muscles at the back. All of these are going down. Now, when you come to the inside of your legs, you're gonna go up. So you can separate the inside into three parts. So one of them is uh, close to the front, one of them in the middle of the side, and one of them slightly to the uh, posterior to the side. But make sure you stay on the inside. So just that on your arms and your legs can do wonders for what's going on in your body, purely because the arms and the legs, they have got the most potent areas in the body. I've been doing acupuncture for 20 years and I know that these points, basically anywhere from your elbow to your uh, tip of your finger and your knee to the uh, tip of your toes, that area can really make huge changes inside the body. So what we're doing now is nothing complicated. It's just the effect of Gua Sha. Now, what's the effect of Gua Sha? Now, basically, it's to improve circulation. There's lots of people come up with all kinds of strange explanations about Gua Sha, but really, there's nothing amazingly, earth-shatteringly magical about it, apart from the fact the world is magical, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, what you need to do basically is improve the circulation in the tissue below um, the surface of the skin. And if that circulation is improved, um, the blood, which remember the blood is just like all of the, uh, the trees uh, all around me. Um, and it's flowing like the branches of the tree through the tissues. When it gets blocked, then uh, the blood can't pass through, uh, the tissue tightens, um, and you're gonna get some kind of symptom. You might get pain or you might get some, something will happen inside your body. So the, uh, the idea of what you're doing is that you're preventing um, this buildup of uh, tension, especially in the areas related to these uh, channels or rivers and blood vessels in the body. Um, and improving the general circulation. That's a great thing. So if you do this every single day, you'll notice a huge difference. Now, uh, I'm gonna do other areas of the body. I'm gonna do your head, I'm gonna do uh, your body, and I'm gonna try and do my back as well. But just the arms and the legs alone do wonders. Mm -hmm.